It's not about me. It's not about you. It's not even about us. It's about legacy. It's about what we choose to leave behind for future generations. And that's why for the next year, and for the first time since 1974, the best and brightest men and women of nations and corporations the world over will pool their resources, share their collective vision to leave behind a brighter future. It's not about us. Therefore, what I'm saying, if I'm saying anything, is welcome back. The work of a single organization, the Syndicate, a rogue nation trained to do what we do, imbued with a new sense of purpose. The Syndicate, you say? Yes, sir. That's what he calls it. songs I wrote for Schoolhouse Rock. That's sort of me. <laughs> I've been very lucky, and uh, although it's not entirely true, I did do a whole day's work in my life when I was very young. <laughs> Things like picking cotton, weeding onions, farm work. That's hard work. But one day, after joining the high school band, I thought, wow, this is great stuff where you play with other kids and they've all got different horns and it fits together like a glove. And I said to my parents, I'm going to be a musician. <laughs> <laughs> they were cool. <laughs> they didn't say you better learn typing. <laughs> so that began my career in music. Now, in 19, about 69, I... I had a house in Pennsylvania, a wife and an eight-year-old daughter. I was trying to make a living as an independent freelance musician operating in New York City. I had this call to have a meeting with the president of a little ad agency where I was sort of known already, McCaffrey and McCall. He said, my little boys can't memorize the times tables, but..." They sing along with Jimi Hendrix and the Rolling Stones. So why don't we put it to rock music and we'll call it multiplication rock. Hmm. Well, what do you think? And I said, yeah, could be good. I'll give it a try. Well, I was highly motivated by this challenge. And he, he said, you know, we'll pay you if we like the song. He had been looking for someone in New York City to set the multiplication tables to music. So I knew it was very important to do it right and to do it well. So I went home and thought. I wouldn't let myself go to the piano and start writing. I wanted to think about it first. And I looked in some math books I had, something about new math and uh, other decimal systems things like that. <clears throat> but the first thing is to write a good song or else it'll be curtains. Goodbye, Bob. <laughs> so I hit upon the idea. Let's pick a number. Three. That's a good number. And I sat down at the piano and I started fooling around. It took me two weeks before I delivered a song to the... Uh, 
the team up at the advertising agency in New York City. This is what they heard. I said it's a nice day today. Well, I don't know. I, I don't see very well. Oh, I don't, don't see it all. Are you are you blind? Yes, I'm blind. Can you hear me? Well, yes, if you yell at me, I can hear oh, you. Oh, wow. Okay. Want to go for a walk and I'll show you around? All right. But you don't walk very well. No, not too Listen. well. What? Listen to me. Yes, I can hear you now. You I'm don't have to yell. Right, just turn to me. Yes. Just say, I believe. What? Say, I believe. I believe. All right, say, I believe. I, can I, you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. How many fingers am I holding up? No. Two. That's good. Wait, wait. Just a minute. Just a minute now. Can you see me? No. Can you see me? All no. right. Just say, I believe. I believe. How many fingers now? Two. You did that without your hands. Yes. Give me that cane. Oh, I'm free. Give me that cane. Oh. Turn around. Yes. Say, I believe. I believe. I believe. Oh. <laughs> I will now do this. Now walk like this. I'm a healer. You oh, see? you're a healer? Yes, I do this. Wonderful. Do this. Yes. I do this. <laughs> I do this. <laughs> yeah. Can you hear me? Good. In San Francisco, California, 1930. Wow. <laughs> well, I worked every nightclub. We didn't call them stand-up in those days. You did a single, Connie Sawyer, girl comedian. And I always got wonderful reviews because I didn't dress schlumpy. Nightclubs, vaudeville, same thing. They just gave them different names. My agent booked me here in LA. I wanted to go to New York. I didn't want to come here. I wanted to go to the theater. I got in my little Chevy. I paid $500. Yeah, $500. I had a Chihuahua. And I worked my way across the country. It took about a year and a half to you just get booked from one to the other. Somebody'd hear and they'd call, you know. I was lucky. I always had a mentor. Somebody always wanted to help me. They sent me to Grossinger's to play the act. And let me tell you, I bombed. They didn't like me. I, it was, it's what you call flop sweat. I'm dying and I know it. I'm not getting a laugh. So I said, I don't know why you guys are so mean to me. I'm Jewish. My name's Rosie Cohn. I started to cry and I ran off. Was that awful? Non-professional. I wanted to go home. <laughs> I'm crying in the dressing room. Oh, hi, Clark. I know it. 
Say hello to our newest star reporter, Tina. Where is she? Why, right here. Tina, this is Clark Bent. Clark, Tina Small. <sighs> it's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. Likewise, Mr. Bent. <laughs> Wait, let me get that for you. <coughs> wow. I like the view down here much better. Me too. Clark, you're drooling. Oh, again? <laughs> Listen, Tina, I have to confess, I'm really attracted to you. It wouldn't work, Clark. Why not? I'm a little person, and you're a big person. Put yourself in my shoes. Well, I could try, but I don't think they'd fit. <laughs> Miss Dane, this just came off the wire. Oh, no! The Benefit Bandit ripped off another charity ball last night. All the donations have been stolen. Fourth time this month. I've got to get to that charity dance -athon. And don't try and stop me. Charity Benefit, huh? Well, maybe this is something the handyman should have done. It's do me, you know? Hmm. Maybe I could help. I'm going to catch the Benefit Bandit. Maybe we should team up. Why not? Two superheroes are better than one. Anyways, up, up and away! Here, let me know. Up, up and away! Well, look who dropped in. The gimp and the shrimp. You talking to me? You talking to me? You must be talking to me, because I don't even want the gimp to run. Well, it's just a little joke, handyman. It's good to see you. And you too, Tiny Avenger. I hope you two have brought donations for this worthy cause. No, that's my last. Thank you. Well, since you two are here, why don't you enjoy yourselves on the dance floor? <laughs> you can tell your if we're going to catch this freak, we better fit in. Hey, how come no one's dancing? Let's get this party started, right? Let's get this party started quickly. Go, Danny, go. Start a party over there. So where's the president? She's late. Well, you gotta figure she's got a lot on her plate, what with the whole alien invasion thing. And her predecessor getting killed. Hey, um, what'd you say to Kara earlier? She seemed pretty angry. I didn't know she was capable of being angry. We've got movement. Sorry, President couldn't make it. Who are you? If I tell you, I'll have to kill you. Next time I say I'm in a hurry, cycle the damn airlock faster. Is this your first day? Doctor, thank the gods you're here. The President needs your help. Move. Doctor. Doctor! OK, 
Okay. Let's have some vitals, like now. Uh, two bullets, nine millimeter. This one lacerated the spleen, the other one nicked the aorta. Now, we removed the spleen, and we thought we repaired the, the aorta, past but... few hours, his BP's dropped down again. It's only 80 over 40, and his heart rate's creeping back into the 130s. Well, you missed something. He's still hemorrhaging somewhere. We're gonna lose him unless we can stop that bleeding. Get me an ABG, CBC, and coax, and get set up for a rapid sequence intubation. Is he gonna make it? How should I know I'm not a psychic? Now get the hell out of here. Well, among the three media, uh, stage, film, and television, which would you say favors you the most? Which, which are you most comfortable with? Uh, film favors me the most. Uh, because the film gives you an added advantage uh, that it, it, um, it, it enlarges and magnifies what you're doing. And so that, uh, at least for me, you know, the ability to be able to convince myself uh, is, is, a, is, an, is an act of concentration and relaxation. And relaxation on film is probably the most important thing. But I find it uh, sometimes it can be more difficult on stage because you must take a moment that may be very real and may be working very well, but it couldn't be seen unless it was magnified by a 35 millimeter camera. So to take that emotion on stage, then put it into the context of uh, classical language or poetry or, or some some other form of uh, of of a discipline of language on top of that, and then try to make it big enough so that everyone can see it. You need a style, and you need uh, and you need lots of experience. And I've had more experience in television than anything else. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, I would I'd be a little out of my depth if I was. Uh, called upon to play a very demanding role on stage. Uh, you know, I'd be scared witless, actually. I mean, I've done it, but I was younger. I didn't know, I didn't realize, you know, what I was trying. I played Macbeth, and I thought, you know, what's okay. I mean, I would, I would be terrified to do that now, because now I know, <laughs> now I know, you know, how bad I was. <laughs> Were you able to take criticism well? I uh, don't take criticism well. Um, I, I try to pretend that I do, and, uh, and uh, but I'm very great at stuffing my feelings. And uh, uh, but criticism doesn't come easily to me. I don't think it comes easily to anybody unless it's given in the right way. And it's very difficult to be pos positively critical. Uh, you know, you have to really know what you what it's about yourself. So, and if you really know some a subject yourself. Uh, and you were trying to teach it to someone else, what you really find is that there's no way you can tell that person until they're ready to hear it.
Yes, put me through to the sheriff, please. What can I do for you? I'm trying to locate one of my men. He's registered in the motel, but he hasn't been in his room. His name is Joe Mannix. He's in jail. What's the charge? Suspicion of breaking and entering. I'll post bail. How much? I'll have to check that and get back to you. I'd appreciate that, Sheriff. Can I expect to hear from you within the next hour? Well, I don't know if we can get things sorted out quite that fast. Try, Sheriff. Try hard. Is that a threat, Mr. Wickersham? No threat, Sheriff. A promise. I'm getting a lawyer for Mannix. He's going to make very sure that no rights have been violated. Thanks for your courtesy, Sheriff. Goodbye. Yeah, Mannix here. Put me through to Wickersham. Lou? Mannix? I ask you for a simple favor, just to get a signature. I'll be getting that signature from the next of kin. Congratulations. And where do I send the bail money? The breaking and entering charge was dropped. And the jail break? They're overlooking that, too. But, uh... I had to kill a man. Are they overlooking that, too? And the sheriff knows it was self-defense. Mannix... I don't know what went on there, and I'm pretty sure I don't want to know. Just get that signature and leave town. You think you can do that? Right. And why would he kidnap Dr. Connors? Dr. Connors, I'm ready to proceed. Temperature alpha. Respiration alpha. Life signs all register normal, Dr. Connors. If I'm right, Mickey here is better than normal. Mm. And look. Look. There it is. A reptile's ability to grow a new limb in a mammal. All because of a couple of micrograms of reptile DNA and the Neogenic Recombinator. Incredible. No, Peter. This is just the beginning. When we do the same for human beings, when we can replace limbs lost in, in accidents or during a war, that will be incredible. Great. Hey, I'm the hero, remember? Why did you bring me here, Kurt? Why? So we can be together. You're still my husband. I love you. I want to be with you, but not like this. I love you, too. I need you, and, and I need your help with this. I need your hands to operate it for me. I can't grasp the other human got weak, scared. Well, what are you going to do with that? Don't be afraid, Margaret. It'll transform you. You'll be able to heal any wound, replace any limb. First you, then everyone. Once I connect the Neogenic Recombinator to these electrical conduits, I can reach every home in the city. Every man, woman, and child. I can transform all of them. No more suffering. No more pain. But Kurt, after you transform everyone, we'll all be like you. Of course. I'm the first of a new race, a better race. If you're so much better, why do you need my hands to help you? You're not better. Look what you've become. No! You're twisting things. I can make people well again. And I won't stop for anything. Not even for Billy. You want him to be like you too? My son. I have a son. It's incredible, Spider-Man. Your DNA structure is changing. Changing? Into what? Can't say yet. But I'll help you find out. I owe you that much from what you've done for me in the past. You were not born with your spider powers, were you? No. I won them on a quiz show. Amazing. These patterns imply Neogenics is involved. But how could that be? That was the category I chose. I need to conduct some more tests. Fire away. I can't tell him the truth. That Neogenics might be the reason I became Spider-Man. 
It was an early experiment of Farley Stillwells that I was watching. Nobody noticed a small spider climbed down into the path of his radioactive ray. The future of genetic engineering lies in unraveling the mystery of DNA. That spider changed my life forever. <gasps> oh. Oh. Doc, what's going on with me? I need to do more tests to be sure, but your DNA may have mutated permanently. For all I know, your powers will be gone.